Hey everyone, welcome back to the Cabin Build. Today we're going to be talking about the next stage in construction. We have finished the rough in, the insulation on the exterior walls, clearly not the interior walls, but we're making progress. Today we're going to be talking about how to install wood, uh, tongue and groove wood siding. This is like a higher version of if you're going to be doing sheetrock, which we did on this side strictly because it's going to be covered up mostly with cabinets and mirrors and stuff but we like the look of the wood siding this is a cabin and it's just beautiful so today we're going to be talking about how to install this tongue and groove pine wood siding it's absolutely beautiful some people would call this beadboard others would incorrectly call it shiplap but it is tongue and groove wood siding this stuff fits together nicely and has a very particular strategy for how to install it so i figured this was a great stage to show this where you see completed walls uh, that wall is complete, and that wall is complete, and I love how that turned out. That dormer up there is just gorgeous. This is a middle-of-the-road stage. I still think it's a perfect example of what we're doing, and then, of course, a wall with a small example so I can show you guys some stuff. So let's get into it. Like I said, there's not a whole lot of information on how to install this stuff online. So I figured this would be a helpful video. If you have any questions, don't forget to post them down below. Hopefully I cover everything. Let's grab a sample so that I can show you guys what I'm talking about when I say tongue and groove. So this stuff comes with a tongue, which is on the top. And this fits into the groove, which is on the bottom. So, I mean, you can install this stuff the other way around. You know, with the tongue on the bottom and the groove on the top. But that would just be weird. We have been doing it so far like this. And again, there's not a lot of information online, so we've just been figuring it out as we go, and I think we've got it figured out. So I've been installing this stuff groove down. So if we were going to start with a piece, let's say we've measured this and we've got the perfect measurement of that wall, and let's say it's six feet exactly. So this piece is six feet, right? And what you do is you get to groove and you set it down on the ground. Now, a lot of people would say, hey, you know what? You need to put a space because this stuff... It's wood, it's going to expand and contract with this, the heat and the cool. You can do that if you'd like. It's up to you completely. A quarter of an inch is probably plenty. And then, nail it. I'll show you my nail gun, but I'm using a 16-gauge finish nailer. I'm also face nailing the bottom of the bottom board. That's because it's got nothing to latch onto. And then the top, we're coming in through the tongue, right at the base, at an angle. Let me demonstrate that, actually. With the nail gun, you can see here, I'm just using a Bostitch 16 gauge. Uh, and you can see all the information here, what this is, model number and everything. It's awesome. I think these nails are two inch. You could get away with more, like longer. You really couldn't get away with shorter, I don't think. And essentially what we're doing here is at the base of the tongue, there goes your nailer. But you don't want to nail it at like 90 degrees because that nail is going to pop through the tongue and interfere with the next groove that's going to go through. And so instead, we've been going in at like a 45 degree angle, maybe a little higher than that. That way it goes into the stud, but it doesn't compete or get in the way or blast through the back and keep the next one from going in smoothly. So bam, nail that and you're good to go. And we've been putting that on every single stud. And right here, you can see, let me just scooch over a little bit, that we are putting all of our seams on studs. And the reason being is because these boards will probably shrink a little bit. And you don't want a seam to expand and expose more of this stuff to the open air. You want it to, if it's going to expand, you want it to expose to a stud, which means it's still sealed. Um, and also, it's obviously way more secure if, if it was over you know, an edge, you could nail the pieces and they would move. The next piece that goes on here would, would firm it back up. But if you're going to put it together, put it together right and make it strong throughout the entire thing. So here's where the seams are on the two by fours every single time. And again, face nail the very bottom. This is where your flooring will go. And, uh, it'll cover it up nicely or baseboards or whatever too. And the only other time I ever do face nailing, because right now we're just nailing through the tongues, is in a place where we cut off the the tongue. So this is kind of just the way kind of it worked out. Uh, we have a piece that's rolling across this entire double window. 
And I'll talk about how to cut this. It's not difficult, but as far as nailing goes, you know, we'll nail it through the tongue on the edge where the stud is. And then we'll also face nail along, you can see here, where we know that the trim is going to be covering it just to keep things nice and secure. Is it overkill? Probably, but there's nothing wrong. When you're, you're right there, you get the nail gun, you might as well use it. Oh, and by the way, this nail gun is pneumatic and it is connected to just a little pancake air compressor. No problem whatsoever. This thing works like a charm. Um, so let's talk now because we've already talked about the orientation of how to install it. We usually start from the bottom and work our way up. Actually, we always start on the bottom and work our way up. Uh, groove down, tongue up. Now, what we want to talk about next is how to do the notching. So this is important because you have things you're going to have to cut around, you know, like windows and such. Now, the windows are really easy because all you have to do is put the piece in, uncut, butt it up against whatever you're going to butt it up against, whether it's another piece or um, or a wall. You know, if you're going to butt it up against a wall, just make sure it's where it's going to be. And then, you know, you'll have the whole board, again, uncut, extending across this whole thing. Grab your pencil and literally drag it from this corner up and draw your lines. And this is definitely the easiest way to determine where you need to cut your board. You pull this out once you've drawn it, put it upside down because that's where your mark is, set it somewhere, and then use your jigsaw and cut that baby out. And it turns out perfect. And that's how I did those. That's actually how I did that up there too. And it turned out really, really nice. So that's the way to, to notch things that are easy and that you can get your hand into and mark the negative. But when it comes to things like outlets, I do have a little bit of a spot that we're gonna be doing a demonstration. So let's say you do need to notch for an outlet, right? So if I set this board next to this, you can see that this box comes out the top of this board. So that means that you can technically measure, and let's say that the end piece here is up against the corner, right? So it's where it's gonna be. You set this here, you account for that little notch there, and you literally draw your line on the top next to the left and then over on the right side of this box. That way you have your left and your right measurement. And then you also, you don't have to have the board in the way here, but you also would want to measure from where the tongue begins, which you, you'll be able to see this real easy on your own, but right here, you measure from there up to the box, and that is going to be your vertical measurement from the bottom of your board. So now you have your your left, your left and your right measurement, and you have your your bottom measurement. I would add, or I would uh from here to here, I'd subtract an eighth of an inch or so, maybe a quarter of an inch. Because remember, this stuff has to fit in and then slide down. So you do need a little bit of extra room at the bottom to actually get this in there. But uh that's how you calculate your measurements. And then of course, if it's the opposite where the let's say you've already notched this and the next board needs to go on top that means that you need to chop out the bottom of the next piece right so you can do the exact same thing except for the opposite instead of instead of lining up the top of the board you know when making your marks you would need to line up the bottom of the board and make your marks and then measure because you know you're going to be cutting out the bottom the top's going to exist still in the next board you're going to want to measure left and right and then from the tongue of the board that's already there to the top of this box that's your measurement and you measure from the bottom to wherever your cut's going to be and you have a small rectangular cut i hope that turned out better than the first iteration that i filmed where i didn't have a demonstration i was just talking and then you end up with this kind of situation so if you know if you do it right, then of course it's actually going to fit. But uh, here we have a a board where I had to, from the top, trim out, and then the second board was the bottom. So it's the exact same scenario. And if you're planning ahead, you'd put your boxes to where all you have to do is trim out the top of one board and the bottom was solid, but I didn't plan ahead that well. And then you can also see that over here with a shower head where all I had to do, and I got really lucky, was trim out the top of this board right here. The bottom of this board did not have to be cut, which was pretty sweet. And of course, 
I could have taken this thing off and made this notch a little smaller, but the scutcheon for the shower heads is so big, I figured, nah, we're good. So that is how you notch for windows and outlets and things like that. Sometimes you actually have to have really intricate knots or notches. You can see that right there. You just had to trim an eighth of an inch or whatever off of that. And it uh, fit just a little tighter. Was that essential? No, but it made me feel good. Same thing with that little notch here. I'm gonna trim that out. And you figure it out as you go. Start at the bottom, work your way up. Now, if you're gonna be doing a ceiling, then our plan is to go from the top and work our way down with the groove pointing up. And the reason for that is because occasionally you have to force a board to go in because these aren't perfect. These, this is a natural product. So what you have to do is, you know, sometimes you have to get on here and force it down and then you nail it. Uh, and that's easy to do because no matter where you are, you can get on a ladder and you can just push, right? If we were trying to pull it up, it would be way more difficult. Well, if let's say we started with our wood down here with the grooves down and we needed to force a board we'd end up having to grab that board and force it down that's 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 gonna be really really hard and then nail it from like way up high because this is at an angle right this is an a-frame so we figured and we haven't done it yet but this is our plan we figured start at the top with the groove up that way if we need to force a board we can just literally grab it and push it from below and then nail it from below at an angle. It's going to be easier to get that nail at the right angle. It's going to be easier to force it up. And we'll be working our way down. Obviously, keeping our seams separate. No, no, we're getting into aesthetics now. But uh, you don't want to put your seams too close. You can see, like, that seam and that seam. They're pretty close, but not too close. Um, I'm not super happy with these two seams. Uh, but one of them is going to be mostly covered up with the baseboard anyway. You, want to, you just want to keep them separate. Like That is like the bare minimum right there. You have two seams on the same 2 by 4 but they're two boards apart. One, two, and there's the third. So keep your seams separate. It'll look a lot nicer. Don't do something like this. You can see how we have multiple seams lined up. Looks like this wasn't even nailed in. Ha, that's funny. Is this one nailed in? No, this one's not nailed in either. Well, we got to do some nailing, I guess. But yeah, don't line up your seams like this. The only reason why I'm doing this like this is because this entire wall from about here up is going to be covered up in cabinets. So I'm taking advantage of this little spot and using some scrap and stuff. So the only reason why I'm doing it like this is because it's going to be covered up. But if people are going to see it, don't put your seams together like that. It looks terrible. Um, so... I think I've covered just about everything, guys. If you have any questions, oh, uh, one thing I do know is that's going to be brought up is a lot of information out there says you have to have something behind this stuff, which is just nonsense. I've seen dozens, maybe hundreds of bil of buildings built. And remember, I'm in Texas. It might be different where you're from, but uh, here in Texas, I've seen dozens, if not hundreds of buildings built with the siding nailed straight to the studs. You, you hear a lot of people say, oh, there's got to be sheetrock behind this stuff or whatever. Well, that's crazy because if you just spend the time putting sheetrock up, you might as well just finish out the sheetrock and don't waste your money and your time putting more siding up. That would just be crazy. Now, if you want to do that, that'd be cool because that'd be more energy efficiency, right? You have a higher R value, but it, it would still be kind of crazy. It's just a lot of work and a lot of money. I mean, it takes a long time to install sheetrock. And I've done this on this wall because it's going to be cabinets, so it's going to be 100% covered up. Um, but yeah, that's not a concern that I have. And everyone that I've talked to that is actually in the business, that's actually done this for a living, says no, you don't, you don't have to do that. That's crazy talk. So anyhow, that might just be the Texan in us, or that might just be common sense, but not necessary. All right, guys, so if you have any questions on how to, if I missed anything, I apologize, but I feel like I covered the entire process. Um, I guess one more thing, if you're getting into aesthetics, try to put your, your boring pieces next to pretty pieces, mix up the design a little bit. But I mean, once you've installed the whole thing, it all kind of blends together and you don't really, you don't really think about it. But just do your best. Like I said, if you have any questions, post them down below in the comments. Thanks for watching and I hope this helped.